This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is part two of our Google Nexus One Android phone review. This is a phone that's made by HTC, but Google sells it directly on their website, and you can buy it for $529 unlocked without a contract, or you can buy it in the U.S. with a T-Mobile contract for $179. Overseas folks in the U.K. and in Europe, you'll be able to buy it too. I believe in the U.K. you can already buy it. Google has done some new things with Android 2.1. We're going to take a look at the phone functionality itself. You can check out part one of our video review to see a 360 look around the device in comparison with many other smartphones, but today we're going to focus on the actual functionality of the phone. So this is Android OS 2.1, which is still called Eclair. It's fairly similar to what we see on the Motorola Droid, which is running 2.0 and 2.01, but Google has done a few things to enhance the user experience. The first thing you can see here is this moving wallpaper. You have an option to use animated wallpapers. And some of them are interactive. For example, if I stick my finger there, the water will pool around where I just stuck my finger. Google has extended the home screen to be five pages now instead of three. Of course, folks like HTC with their Sense UI had already extended the home screen and manufacturers can do that if they wanted, but that's the new default. So you can see here. And you can put your shortcuts on here and your widgets just as before. Here's a Facebook widget, for example, on that screen. And we've got the weather here via weather bug. This is a wireless control that came with it, and this is part of Android 2.1 on the Nexus One. Main screen, I've added this little clock here, which is sort of like HTC's clock. That's not standard widget. You can add whatever you like to it. It's available on the Android Marketplace for free. This is new from Google. This is a combined weather and news widget, and it picks up the weather forecast automatically using the GPS, and this scrolls a variety of news sources. So if you tap on the left side, it'll give you full weather forecast for your current location. And if you tap on the right side, it'll give you a pretty nice news reader. It gives you top stories. And then U.S. stories, sports, entertainment, and then back to that weather page that we saw right there. So that again is new for Android 2.1 on the Nexus One. These buttons down here are touch sensitive buttons. You press a little bit harder than you would on the screen. This is a capacitive screen. This has a 1 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU. So currently this is the fastest Android device on the market. That's why it's so very responsive. And this is the new application palette before we had the drawer that you dragged up and dragged down and now we have just this kind of moves into focus kind of thing. Again that's quite fast. Get it home. It's gone again. Take a look at a couple of applications. Take a look at the web browser. Something that's interesting here is this is the standard Google on-screen keyboard that we've seen before, and on the home screen we've always had the Google search with the microphone. You can speak to make a Google search. Now you can see there's actually a little microphone button integrated into the keyboard. Any place pretty much that you can type, you can use the microphone instead and speak your input. So we'll try that out. Right now we're on the Google website. We'll clear out our last search. You can use this just to go to websites too. Pizza, Plano, Texas. Now it's analyzing what I've said. And in fact, it got it just right. So that's a new feature, and that's, again, it's pervasive throughout the operating system that you can do that. The display has an accelerometer. You can see it's very fast. And we'll load our website to see how it does. This does not yet have full Flash support. Adobe Flash 10.1 support is coming for the Nexus One, hopefully soon. If you look at our bookmarks, we have visual bookmarks here. And this is over T-Mobile's 3G network. We have a pretty good signal here in the Dallas area. Phone also has Wi-Fi BGN and is a new feature for a handset. Obviously, Wi-Fi N is going to be faster, but it's also rough on battery life. So here's our website. Alas, there is no pinch zooming. 
I see a fast scrolling here, so if you want to zoom, you use the on-screen controls to zoom. Click on the link, see another page load. We're sure some creative folks will get pinch zooming working as a kind of hack for the phone. But so far, Google isn't taking pinch zooming too seriously. We don't know if that's because of potential legal issues with Apple, or who knows. So the browser is very fast. So now we'll take a look at an embedded flash video, which does render. This is one of our reviews. This is of the Sony Reader Daily Edition. Right here we have an embedded video, which it shows. Much like the iPhone, and you hit play, and it's going to switch to Google's embedded YouTube player. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Sony Reader Daily Edition PRS 900. So that's the YouTube player, and if you want to switch to high quality mode, switch, wait a bit, and it picks up where you left off. It doesn't start again from the beginning, which is probably a good thing. So now it's playing the video at the high quality setting, which obviously fills the screen and looks much better. We're streaming this over T-Mobile's 3G network connection, HSDPA, and obviously you'll get the best performance if you do this over Wi-Fi. Next we'll take a look at the Android market. This is where you can download free and paid applications. This is what it looks like on 2.1, which is pretty much like 2.0 if you've used the Motorola Droid or looked at it. Initial screen here shows you apps, games, and things that you've downloaded before it remembers. You can hit the search button to search. Let me see again, it's very fast and responsive. No problems there. Let's just take a look at something. And you see a description, screenshots, user comments. And if you want to install it, you can just hit the install button. It tells you what permissions it'll use. And it'll start downloading it in the background. You don't need to stay in the application at this point. You can actually go home and you can see the little status up here that shows you that the program is downloading. Next we'll take a look at Google Maps. This is the latest version of Google Maps that get, actually provides spoken navigation. phone does have a GPS. And the 800 by 480 pixel display looks absolutely great for maps. Again, there's no pinch and zoom here, so you have to use these plus and minus buttons to zoom in. If you want to find something, say we're searching for PetSmart, and it shows on the map the PetSmart that it's found. Tap on one, show it on the map, get directions to it, navigate to it with spoken directions, call them, I get a street view of it. Let's check out street view. And there's the street view. Again, that works with the accelerometer too. You can move it around very fast. Nothing like one gigahertz. This is definitely the fastest Android phone on the market. Next we're going to take a look at the gallery application which handles photos and videos. In particular we're going to take a look at the videos. Now this is just a QVGA video that was originally taken from YouTube so it's not super high quality. That's not very challenging. We'll take a look at something more challenging. This is ripped from a DVD. The speaker on the back of this is fairly large, but it's a mono speaker and it's not terribly loud as you're probably noticing. Definitely want to use a three and a half millimeter stereo headset with this guy if you're listening to movies for a long period of time. So this is a much higher resolution widescreen video and it's having absolutely no problems playing it thanks to the Snapdragon CPU. So far gaming on Android has been pretty much all about casual games, but now Google has added 3D APIs that obviously if you have a fairly powerful device like this enables some very good gaming. We're going to look at a game called Speedforge 3D that we just downloaded on the Android Marketplace, which 
is definitely in a new class of games. The game uses the accelerometer and it has haptic feedback so it's vibrating every time I spastically hit the wall. That's some pretty good 3D graphics. I'm seeing some iPhone level gaming here on Android. Lastly, we'll take a look at the music player, which sadly has not changed much. Google really needs to do some work on the music player. Here's your very basic music player. You do get album art here if it's available. Then you can move around pretty quickly and easily. Phone obviously supports Gmail. It also supports Exchange for email and contacts, but Calendar is not working too great at this point. If you have a new email or some kind of notification, you can set the trackball to Pulse in white to let you know that you've got a new email or a new alarm. So that's the Google Nexus One. Android phone, as Google calls it, it's the super phone. Uh, it may not be a game changer, but right now it is probably the fastest and one of the sexiest Android phones on the market. And we think the point of the, whole, the phone is really to show what Android can do if you give it top notch hardware. The 5 megapixel camera that shoots high resolution video, the very fast CPU, the large capacitive AMOLED display, these things really make this phone a showcase for the best that Android can be at the moment. That said, Motorola Droid is still just a fine phone and it's great for those people who want a hardware keyboard. And things like the HTC Hero are great because of HTC Sense UI and the customizations and usability. So we wouldn't say that this shows up every other phone on the market completely. But in terms of overall hardware and the seamlessness of the Google experience, it's a very good phone. So this is the Google Nexus One. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review.